Ken Hill, Ken Hill Coaching. And I get a lot of requests asking about um, how we look at data or our data analysis, um, what it consists of, and just a lot of a lot of general questions about it. So I'm going to start a series of videos where we look at data and compare a, a new rider, novice rider, to uh, a pro rider, uh, pro rider to sort of an amateur racer, and then even pro rider to pro rider. And we'll take it through some through some uh, different steps where we'll actually just concentrate on this the speed, the GPS speed graph, and then we'll dive actually into the throttle and the and the brake uh, the brake graphs as well. But before we get before we get into that is, uh, yeah, I mean data comes in a lot of different forms and data. Um, uh, I mean data is here with us, right? Bikes are coming out with the ability to record that data. Uh, and so it's just, it's here to stay. And we really added that to our portfolio probably 10 years ago. Um, you know, when you look at data, the original data is video, right? So video is a way of capturing what you're doing on the bike. Come in and review video, and it gave you just a really great way of starting out of seeing yourself in real time and, and oh, wow, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. But not everybody learns um the same and not everybody can get the same thing from from video as they can see uh, basically a a uh, a uh, line graph of of what is going on a real true comparison of what somebody's doing uh, versus them so we branched off into some um uh gps speed data because it was very ac accessible and we used just a simple aim solo and use the, the GPS speed off that. So we'll kind of uh, linger here for a second. And a lot of times when people look at data, they make it too complicated, right? They start looking at, oh uh, gosh, they want to look at throttle graph and brake graph, and then they want to look at you know this force data, and uh, and it gets too confusing. And we wanted to make it very very simple and communicate it in a in a very simple manner as well as an affordable manner. And so by literally looking at um, a, a speed trace, you can decipher a massive amount of information from that in a very, very short amount of time. And so that's what we really stuck with. And so we literally can take the same AIM solo box and put it on somebody else's bike, let them go run some laps and to be able to compare them. So with that comparing, right? We wanna be able to compare apples to apples. And um, when we talk about apples to apples, uh, not every apple, there's different kinds of apples. So luckily um, we're using AIM. I mean, there's a lot of other different things to use, but our, our, our group has used AIM. We have AIM, basically AIM reference laps from all over the US and um, almost every track and at different speeds and different bikes. And that's, that's really where some of the, the, the devils in the details is, what are you using for a proper reference lap? And we want to be able to make sure it is as close to, to what you're doing. The one, the graph that I'm going to show you is a pro rider versus a novice rider on the same motorcycle. So I'm not, I'm not saying, okay, dude, here's a pro motorcycle rider, racer on a thousand at a lap record versus somebody that's just starting off on a Ninja 400. No, right. That's, that's not good data. Instead, we have data from same motorcycle pro rider versus the new rider. And we'd already started working with this rider a little bit. So we already had some, some, um, some um, base to start from. So whether, whether um, you send in video for us to look at, we do our best to, to try, if you're riding a thousand compared to a thousand, you're riding 600 compared to a 600 and at similar paces. So that's, that's really one of how we wanna look at it. So as much as the interpreting the data is important, having the right reference with the data is is, is incredibly important. Um, so that's that's how we um, that's how we go into it. So let's 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 do it. Let's jump into it and um, take a look at uh, how we look at this. So we just have a simple uh, uh, GPS graph here. This is just your your aim your aim solo your aim solo graph and. We have it set up um, again. It's the same same day, same bike, um, novice rider versus a professional rider. And again, we had already started to do some work with this with this um, uh, with this student. 
So it's easy when you look at a graph like this and be like, oh, dude, let's, you know, gosh, we have to look at, um, you know, let's look at all this opportunity here. We can go, oh my God, we can go so much faster there. Dude, you just got to have it, you just got to pin it, pin it longer in there. Ah, before we get to that is we need to establish that the bike is in the right place at the right time. So as, as easy as it is to want to look at that, and, and we will, we need to look at the slowest points of the corner first. So we simply will look at where the pro rider's slow point is versus where the, the, the novice rider, the, the rider we're comparing it, their slowest point is. So we start to look at where it is, and then we start to look at the shape of it. So a, a great one is here, this particular corner here is a very slow corner. And it's interesting where the, the novice rider is basically, for the most part, mimicking what the pro rider is doing because in a slow corner like this, you're pretty much forced to. So that's great. So we'll start off with that saying, great. Yeah, look at how well your bike is positioned there. Because both the pro rider and then the novice rider have essentially a very, very close slow point of the corner. Um, we can see though, it, when we take that to a next step, we can see how we're delayed a little bit on acceleration right there. And, and um, you know, we got some things to work on there, but we'll talk about that. But the general shape of the graph isn't bad. And again, when we start to, we start to blow this up a little bit. So let's, let it, let us, let's blow this up a little bit. So coming down here into turn one, as far as the slow point is concerned, is the pro rider gets the bike slowed. And because this is a longer radius corner, he's got a way to accelerate and then it accelerates. The novice rider, their slow point is much, much later after the pro rider. Um, turn two here is actually not too bad. Four, they've slowed a little bit earlier and they've slowed longer. Um, same thing down here into this other, another big long carousel corner, same thing, right? They're slowing earlier and basically longer and then waiting to accelerate. And you can really see the difference when what, not having the bike slow point at the right time, how much they lose out on acceleration at that point. And then here we've got a big, big, long, fast straightaway and coming into sort of a kink. And you can see how much earlier that ride, that rider lets off. And again, same thing, slow point is not bad. Um, slow point is later here. So we look at slow points first and we try to get those slow points matched up first. Um, then we can work on some of these other areas. So let's, let's dive into some of those other areas. So <clears throat> the newer rider, typically when we have a newer rider and um, they'll want to pick up their corner speed or they'll want to be, oh, I, I want more corner speed, more corner speed, more corner speed. Well, where corner speed comes from is a good braking procedure. So they'll accelerate longer, then use the brakes proficiently. And then that's what gives them the proper entry procedure, which gives you the proper roll speed. This rider here, if you look, they're, they're not afraid to accelerate. Right, their acceleration rate matches the pro rider. So that's not an issue. The issue, as you see, is they're letting off the throttle quite a bit earlier than where the pro rider is. So in this case, we would start with reference points because if we don't have a reference, we have nothing to tie the technique to. So we'd start saying, okay, we'd go back and look at video and this is where video is great or we do a car drive, whatever it might be. I would say we need to establish some reference points because if you look, you're essentially getting lost. You're you're not you're not you don't have confidence in where you're going, so you don't hold the throttle on. So we would look at some reference points, whether it's where we're going to apply the brakes or whether we're going to turn in, and we would give them places um, or give them reference points so they can tie that into their technique. So we would start with reference points, and then from there we would actually start looking into the brake application process. And here's, here's why we would start looking into that because as they start to go quicker, well, there's actually quite a bit of information that can be, that can be taken from these graphs on their brake application. And you can see that in the shape of the speed graph. So if you sort of look at this, this the pro riders speed graph, we'll try to get that as good as we can. And then we look at 
the novice rider's speed graph, right? You can see that the pro rider is decelerating, um, is, is, has, a, has a greater deceleration rate. So it all goes back to, right, getting to the slow point in the shortest amount of time and getting from the slow point in the shortest amount of time. That's what we're trying to do. And it's taking the novice rider a lot longer to get to that slow point. So yes, we would start working on their brake application, right? How they go to the brakes, how they're building brake pressure, how they're getting their depth perception engaged. And by tying all that together, almost, almost always the corner speed comes up, right? The roll speed comes up because now they're going to the brakes at the appropriate time and they're having the appropriate brake application that matches that corner. So just some quick stuff here on on how we use this and then we would start you know we would start off with the um with the biggest areas right we would start off with this area and in this area then we could start off in this area because that offers the the best lap time gain we wouldn't get jacked up here right we'd be looking at this corner last because it's really just not not that big of a deal so we would be trying to to sharpen up the way that this looks to make it crisper um, and then I can guarantee on this corner, if we get the brake application and the, the, the um, reference points going, that'll take care of itself because the shape of that graph is, is actually very good. Same thing here, we work on reference points in this area. Um, and then we'd start working on some of the reference points uh, in this area. So a lot, there's a lot that you can do with just this sort of data. Um, it's, um, again, it's a very inexpensive way to, uh, to, uh, to get a lot of information and the order in which you want to be able to work on your, your riding. So there you go. There's just a quick little, uh, a quick little graph against a pro rider versus a novice rider. And this is something that you can do. Um, I do a lot of these uh, reviews on racers 360 and, uh, racers 360 is set up to, um, to, to get aim data like this. And uh, we can, if we've got a reference for it, then there's some certainly something that we can work on with you and give you, uh, give you some next steps with it. So, all right, thanks for tuning in. And, and yeah, we're gonna have more of these out there. We're gonna have more um, graphs where we, we again, we take um, uh, more of an amateur rider, uh, amateur racer, and we start actually diving into the brake and throttle graphs as well as the fun ones, which is a pro rider uh, versus a pro rider. So there you go.